episode eight and it still sucks <laughs> uh, we'll get there um i have a new drum cover out on my youtube channel it's in honor of the actually good castlevania netflix series so check that out at youtube.com slash wise drums um, be sure to subscribe to the Explicit Materia Facebook page for updates and uh, video clips of episodes of the podcast. Social media. Find me at The Wise Drums on Twitter, at Wise Drums on Instagram, and Wise Drums on Facebook. Uh, this episode is bittersweet because it's sort of a farewell to two of my BFFs. My biffs! Um, Emmy award winning James West, that's right. He actually has an Emmy. Um, and his brother Dane are moving to LA. Uh, James and I were in a band together for nearly a decade, and if any of you know what it's like to be in a band trying to quote unquote make it, then you know some of those bonds stick with you for the rest of your life. Um, there's just something about struggling together towards a common goal that just cements your relationship no matter what. Uh, not to leave Dane out, of course. Um, even though me and Dane weren't ever in a band, we still bonded as fellow drummers. He's phenomenal. Fucking prodigy. Um, and now he's like, I don't want to focus on drums anymore. I'm going to be this awesome videographer and director. And he's amazing at it. Just he took it up like two years ago. And it's like, no problem. I got this. <laughs> so he's amazing. Um, these two have been working together, uh, working together on music and musical projects since they were kids. Um, their current project is called Sick Wit. And their new EP holographic is now out on iTunes. Uh, it should be also noted that without these two individuals, we wouldn't have the awesome killer visuals and sound for my Attack on Titan drum cover, which I will be eternally grateful for. You guys are amazing. Um, in this episode, we talk an unnecessarily amount an, un, un, uh, we talk an unnecessary I can't even talk. I cannot talk right now. We talk an unnecessary amount of time about Tom Cruise. It's, I'm sorry. It just happened. We talk Scientology, Spider-Man, sunglasses, the jinx, hip-hop, conspiracies, and their eventual move to L.A., which they're actually on their way to L.A. right now. So this is the farewell podcast for James and Dane West. I wish you all the best of luck. Let's get on with the episode. Click off. We don't really need a click for talking. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we want to throw down a beat. Throw down that beat. <laughs> <laughs> don't act like you don't throw down the beat when the turning signal comes on. Like click it on. I do actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when the uh, every every drummer I think does <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> How crazy is it though? Sometimes when like you have a you click your turn signal and then. It actually goes with the song that you're listening to, and you're like, "Whoa, that's perfect never tempo." Happened. What? Never happened to me. And then it slowly, well, it only lasts slowly for like goes three off. Beats, it, yeah, <laughs> but for those three beats, you're, you're like, like, "Oh yes, the, you know the stars." I align. always notice when it matches up with the the lights in front of me. <clears throat> the lights in front of you, <laughs> yeah, like the cars blinker in front. Of me. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. So am I. <laughs> Let me sip this beer. <laughs> uh, no, I've done the yeah. same thing with the blinker tapping and beat with the music. <laughs> uh, so Is that weird? I don't know. You guys just came out with a new album. And I got to say, the fucking... Uh, the 1985 like video, like small little video clip you did that reminds me of fucking uh, was it? Uh, not, it's not Ridge Racer. Is it Ridge Racer? Like the old Sega like game, the old, old school old game. School like what that's that exactly game what uh, we wanted yeah, to go for. It's from Sega, and I think it's called Racing U- Cruising USA. Cruising USA. No, no, it's not Cruising USA. That was an old. That was, that was a later. 90s arcade yeah. game that you went. Yeah, it wasn't Cruising USA. It's a better it was, graphics on that one. Because <laughs> I remember playing it as a kid, and I was like. 
And then you would crash in the like because you were ri- riding with this blonde chick, and you're just driving around, and if you cr- crash, like both of you just fly out of the car violently, <clears throat> and then you guys get back into the car and start driving again. <laughs> Do you remember the um, the little toy car when you're like three or four, where you turn the wheel and the like? M- <laughs> I'm choking up here. <laughs> the little middle car is what turns this like. It's got like a plastic toy car. Oh wait, yeah, I do remember that. And a little yeah, chicken. I remember this. Yeah, and a little rubber beeper. And it would yeah, and it would have the sounds. It would have the sounds of like <clears throat> you changing the gears and stuff. But mine wasn't. It wasn't like it was like uh, it was like a piece of like paper. It was like that would move. You know? Oh, like a scroll. Yeah, it was like a, it would be with scrolling. like a light behind. It. Yeah. And then so you move the car, and you would move the car with you know with your little wheel and your little gear, and you felt like a little adult, a little adult. <laughs> and of course, power wheels. Oh, power wheels! I always yes. never mm. never had one of those. I always never had a power wheels one. either. <laughs> I still I still give my parents shit for that. Like all I wanted was power wheels. I feel like I hung out with wheels? a friend and got to drive his one time at some point. That seems like I was like. Felt the taste of it for just a second. <laughs> I was like, this is fucking sweet. <laughs> that was our Audi back in the day. Just a couple minutes of riding. <laughs> but yeah, dude, like... Uh, yeah, that's the, kind of the exact aesthetic we wanted to, like, compliment. I, th- I just thought it was a cool visual to put with the song for Instagram. It was pretty easy to do. Yeah, your visuals on y'all's songs <laughs> are really fucking cool and interesting. And, like, dude, so, I don't it. really s- see a lot of that. You know, uh, yeah. It's then again, a, I'm not inside the hip hop world as much as you guys are, so I don't really know. Well, not, or music, it really. Like, well, this <laughs> whole album came out from like a just visual ideas. Really, we were coming up basically with this movie treatment that we thought was really cool, and out of that sprung this this dope album that kind of like matches it sonically. And so we're trying to pay tribute to the ideas that we were having, uh, and we're working on a music video right now that. Uh, it's gonna be dope. We're just uh, it's still in the process. I of, saw a of little bit it of it together. today. I got the little sneak peek. It's cool. I like. Yeah, it. the the first uh, testings of some new ideas. Yeah, y'all's videos are. It's, uh, I was just actually just rewatching all of them and <laughs> fucking uh, envy. Oh that yes. video is just hilarious. It's amazing. They, they, <laughs> it still cracks me up when I watch it. <laughs> Uh, it's just oh, ridiculous. You guys are sitting down, and the, you guys do, I lined it up so perfectly with the, sitting next to the guy in the video. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I, just, I, had, I had just learned how to green screen, and I was like, "Man, we got to do something with this." this it, is landed, too cool. it landed perfectly. <laughs> man. It's so fun. It's so cool. And uh, yeah, it's fucking really cool. The songs are fucking awesome. Nineteen eighty-five is a banger. Oh yeah. Nineteen eighty-five. Is the best year, and I know you don't know that, but <laughs> I do. Know. I'm here to tell you. I knew that. I knew that for one year to 1984. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I barely missed the cutoff. I, I, I would have been born in '85. I feel like everything nostalgic about the '80s happened in '85. It seems, dude. I just watched. Have you watched CNN's The '80s? Yes. Or the '60s or the '70s? Those fucking documentaries are amazing. Yeah, it really is incredible. Um, I haven't watched the 60s or the 70s, but uh, I did watch the 80s, and it was like, it's just really interesting, like, looking at some of the things that... Like the first phones? Like, yeah. You knew, like, you knew they were huge, but then when you see the dude, like, pull it out in the street, and you're like, oh my god, <laughs> are, you, are you about to call in artillery? What the like fuck? like a Ghostbuster. <laughs> <laughs> what is that guy? That guy's got a phone on his back? And then, like, the like the software <laughs> wars between Apple and Microsoft, and, like... Yeah, just, it's insane. It's really f- just fascinating to see how far we've come in just so little time. I mean, at least since the 80s, you know. And then you watch something like in the 60s and talking about like all the political, you know, stuff that went on during the, like 68 and, and you, you just listen to all these arguments back and forth and you're like, oh yeah, that, we're still having those arguments. Right, yeah, you're like, holy <laughs> shit, that is the same fucking thing we're arguing about right now. I mean, that has not changed. So turns that's out cool. this is just what everyone always argues about. <laughs> this is what happens. We're stuck in a fucking vicious cycle. But we don't need to get into that. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Fucking, there was something else I wanted to talk to you. Oh, have you guys seen? Um, I haven't seen it yet, but because I know 
James, you're a huge comic book nerd, or at least w- 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 read a lot more comic books than I have. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> you have. Like, every loser. time we would talk about every time we would talk about a movie that's coming out, you would give me some sort of like factual information about the character that I never even knew about. Yeah, I'm a huge uh, comic nerd. Um, so did you watch? Did you watch Homecoming? Oh yes, watched Homecoming. Was it awesome? It was super good. I think it's the best part of movie. <laughs> but I wouldn't call it awesome. It wasn't <laughs> awesome at all? It was awesome in so many ways. <laughs> Everyone that I've talked to has been like, Jim said he didn't really like it. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I personally... <laughs> Everyone's like, I thought it was incredible. <laughs> I personally felt like the plot was a little bit like a Smallville plot. Oh, dang. It's <laughs> fired. Even with Michael Keaton? <laughs> I mean, Michael Keaton... Michael Keaton did awesome. Michael Keaton's amazing. Yeah, he kills. It's just, he, he, actually how I feel is Michael Keaton deserved better. Michael Keaton's character was amazing, and if he was given the right plot to really be a real bad guy, then it would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> also, spoiler alert, no Spidey sense in the whole movie. Really? Interesting. And if he has it, they never reference it or even talk about it. And there's no ex- like movie example where he would have Spidey sense. I haven't seen the movie, but to my knowledge, this is the one where they really showcase... They, this is the first movie that they really showcase how strong Spider-Man is. Like, yeah. he, like he's supposed to be super strong, and but he's—they don't really showcase that in any of the movies. He's like, well, uh, so it's strong. more like Spider Boy in this movie, <laughs> not really Spider Man. Wasn't yet. he supposed to be young in the comics? He's supposed yeah, to be super but young because he's so young and like learning. Like, I don't really feel like he comes off as strong. More of just like he's a kid learning exactly that. Not like a strong idol though. He's nice, and like, he, like you could tell he's like a good kid, but. uh yeah, like in all of the I wouldn't others, say super strong. <laughs> in all of the other Spider Mans, they start off in their senior year. Like Toby Maguire is in his senior year. So then by like Spider Man three, he's like out of college, <laughs> has a real job, you know? Yeah. Uh you know this I'm, one I mean puts strong him physically, like, not strong yeah, in the yeah, mental yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. This <laughs> this one puts him at like freshman in high school. Wow. And so I mean, I, I, it might be sophomore. Somebody's going to lay into me about it, but I can't really remember. <laughs> but he's super young. He's not a senior yet. And just imagine the somebody online movie, being like, it wasn't that deep. <laughs> yeah. Someone will. Someone will. <laughs> the whole movie focuses on, and this really, to me, just speaks to my age. The whole movie focuses on the struggles of being a teenager in high school, but you're also a superhero, which is how they want to reinvent Spider Man. Um, he's no longer the adult man who works <laughs> for a paper newspaper company, you know, like <laughs> does photography, <laughs> like has a career, wears spandex under it. I'm a photographer. Um, Not to mention every actor who's played Spider-Man has always been 30, you know, and they're supposed to, and we're supposed to believe that he's just fresh out of high school. <laughs> right. Yeah. They try to shave him up. So yeah, in that sense, this is a first, this is the first like well cast, uh, even well written Spider Man in so many aspects, but I felt like the actual story was like a really like a cartoon episode. Like it, yeah, and like it, it was geared for like a fourteen, like the ten to fourteen year olds. Well, yeah. Would you say that about like? Have you rewatched the first Avengers film lately? I mean, the first, uh, I've seen it relatively recently. The first Avengers film, you know, I feel the same way kind of about the first Avengers film that it's like. A bit cheesy, I guess. I mean, it's great. Don't get me wrong, but because uh, that's what I was feeling too when I was rewatching it. It was like, like the allure of the fact that all these big names are finally right, together and coming movie, together, right. and that's, that that has passed. And I'm rewatching it, and I'm like, <laughs> I mean, it, this is this is this is cool, but did this fucking suck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, some of the one liners that you laughed at hilariously. Well, the thing is, is you were so close to the characters at that point because right. you had. The way Watched Marvel all the movies did, is you had to watch each and every movie of each character, and then the Avengers came out. So yeah, you had already right. like suffered through them and picked your favorite. <laughs> and then now you're like so fucking tired of the same characters. They've been been playing the same actors have been playing them for 
10 years, you know. God, what's I mean, what's going to happen who's going to be the next Wolverine? I dude, I don't know. Talk about getting old. You're I've, like you, I've got it figured out. <laughs> who's going to be the next Wolverine, Jim? Ruby Rose. Who's Ruby Rose? <laughs> right, that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> Isn't that her name? It's a girl. Oh, you want you want it to be the girl. The, Ruby Rose the, is an actress. The like she's in like Orange is a New Black. Um God, she was in the new Triple X film. <laughs> Are you talking yeah. about? Oh, you talking about the girl with the short hair? Kind of yeah. looks like Justin Bieber a little bit. Yes. Okay. <laughs> More sh- stronger than Justin Bieber. <laughs> um, of course. <laughs> More stronger. <laughs> <laughs> More stronger. <laughs> she looks more stronger. <laughs> Is are you being serious? Do you want it to be? Or are you being? Yeah, just a character like that, like a character where it shifts from being Wolverine that we know to something X-23. totally different. That might actually work. I feel like because, that would work. Because that's what you're they not going to be able to recast Hugh Jackman. I no. mean, Hugh Jackman is well, Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a very, that's actually a very a very good direction. I think that that would be really cool to see. Especially since after the... Again, man, I'm so not caught up with any of my like Marvel Cinematic Universe shit. I haven't watched Logan. I heard that's amazing. Never watched it. But from what I gather, it's the storyline of... Yeah, he's basically trying to protect the new... Wolverine and the girl basically has the same powers, um, right? And she's a child, and it'd be cool to see her she's grow up to be actually his clone. Oh, uh, right. That's and actually it's... how it plays out, and that's how it plays out in the comic books too. Yeah, so that'd be pretty cool to see her like grown up and her being the next Wolverine, you right? Know? Yeah, and who would be played that character? Ruby, Ruby Rose. Rose. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't know. Ruby Rose might be too tall. It's prob- but, probably needs to be somebody shorter. Yeah. But of course, Hugh Jackman was tall. As fuck. Yeah. And they made him look short. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That, they reversed Tom Cruise. Him. <laughs> yeah. You know Tom Cruise has to like stand on like a, <laughs> right. a step oh, in all imagine? of his scenes. <laughs> yeah, get on the kitty stool. All right. <laughs> that's kind of how it is. Poor, poor Tom. Scientology apparently can't grant height. <laughs> yeah, but imagine l- looking and acting taller than you are because you're that good of an actor. That that just plays naturally into everything you do. That is crazy to think when about. You're so, when you're literally so short. Yeah. I mean, he's a great actor. Can't take that away from him. Yeah. He's done it's like some hard to imagine roles. that he would, if he were standing next to Danny DeVito, he would only look a few inches taller. <laughs> I don't think he's that short. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> Danny DeVito's like, what, four foot? <laughs> Someone fact check this. <laughs> he's only like, he's probably like, what, five eight? Five, no, I think seven? Danny DeVito is like five one at least, right? Danny DeVito, I think, is like four foot or four foot two. No. Danny DeVito is fucking short as shit. Can we fact check? Yeah, is let's, okay, let's. Here. How about we do? Up. Who wants to? <laughs> how tall? No is one's Tom gonna Cruise? ask Siri. I know. It's just like. Hold on. <laughs> Let me. All right. Fine. Oh, get it out of my pocket. How tall is Tom Cruise? How tall is Danny DeVito? Let's see. Let me check on that. Yeah, you better Tom check. Tom Cruise's height is five feet seven. Height is five feet seven. Okay. Four feet ten, Danny DeVito. <laughs> okay. But Tom Cruise is five seven. So yeah, yeah, okay. So a foot. <laughs> <laughs> he's a foot okay. <laughs> he's a whole foot taller. But still, like a foot is really is it you're right though. It really isn't that much taller than Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. When you think about it. Now I really want them to have a movie together. Starring Danny DeVito. Like Tom Cruise. <laughs> like Vince and it'll be Vaughn. Called Walking Tall Two. <laughs> Vince, yeah, Vince Vaughn would look as tall to Tom Cruise as Tom Cruise would look to Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> They, like it'd be like a perfect sixty degree. I can't believe you angle. said that correctly. <laughs> you know, like this triangle that they form, <laughs> like a perfect angle. Oh the projector man. on the ground. It's so crazy to me that he's like the poster child for Scientology. Like that's still Tom like Cruise? crazy to me. I thought he got I... out or something, or tried to. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I listened to the Joe Rogan podcast like religiously, and so he had. Have you watched that uh, Going Clear documentary about Scientology? Nope, it's great. It's awesome. It. <clears throat> it's based on the book Going Clear, and it's just like all these like um, high-ranking people in Scientology who got to the highest part of that, I guess, cult, religion, whatever you want to call it, and got to the Zenu part, and they're like, "What the fuck." 
but they're already like five hundred thousand dollars in, right? And you know, and so when they try to leave, like the the religion like blacklists them. They try to they they put on like stories that call them like pedophiles and try to like make up all these stories about the people who left. And so this book called Going Clear was made, and it goes into just all the fucking crazy shit like kidnapping and beatings and it's fucking really really fascinating and uh i think it's david miscavige who runs scientology and his father ron miscavige was on the joe rogan podcast and his father is the one that got david into this little religion but his father left like years ago and so to hear his father talk about his son who he's never he hasn't talked to in like 30 years it's fucking fan. It's amazing. Like <laughs> that sounds really interesting. It How is, old is Scientology? Not that old. <laughs> you know, I, like, I think it goes. I think it goes. Isn't it like like less than a hundred years or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's less than hundred. Is it really? Yeah. What what comedian was like? Your Hubbard religion shouldn't be old enough for your grandmother to go. Yeah, that's not true. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah, I remember they made that up. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's complete bullshit, by the way. Sign yeah, that's what I'm saying. Thing. Like, what, where do they benefit? What are they? I guess there's secret shit that they get to do under the religion. But what secret shit? Money, taxes. Well, yeah, they are tax free. I mean, shit like that. They got tax exempt status from the government. <laughs> right. Which the talks the, the documentary Going Clear talks about and it's fucking it's infuriating when you're just watching this. You're like, how the fuck did this happen? And it um, goes into like the whole like the possibility and main theory that Scientology was basically started for uh L. Ron Hubbard to just basically get out of paying taxes because he owed like all this money to the government. That's so crazy. It sounds plausible. It sounds a lot more plausible like, than what if fucking that... Xenu. <laughs> Imagine if that was real. Like a whole re- like religion started off at that. <laughs> Imagine just somebody trying to get out of paying money. I mean, it would definitely be a lot easier to do that then than now. Yeah, because you try. Like you, I am what? my own religion. Check, look it up. On, <laughs> there's plenty. They, of there's no Wikipedia back then. <laughs> you didn't have to. Oh, like, okay. We're sorry. You're good. <laughs> Yeah, there was, no, no one was you. like fact checking. They're like, oh, oh, so, oh, that's your religion. I heard about pile. that. We'll put it over here <laughs> in the right pile. <laughs> or Mormonism. That's yeah, you know what I'm upset on Mormonism is like one of my favorites. Um, we just watched this video the other day uh, about this sunglass company that, like, basically, all the sunglass companies are owned by this one company. And it's just an illusion of a bunch of different sunglasses when really it's all the same thing. Like Ray-Bans. Uh, yeah, know. and they don't just own the sunglasses. Ray-Bans, like Prada, Chanel, um, just on and on and on. Basically every pair of glasses. It's owned they by just one bought company. out Oakley's, yeah. And it's all the same exact company, the same exact factory making all of the glasses. Um, and then they also own Sunglass Hut, which is the only place you can really buy glasses. <laughs> and they don't just own Sunglass Hut. They also own Sunglass House. Lens crafters. <laughs> um like basically like every they basically own the entire eye industry. That's when it comes nuts. to eyewear. Yeah, it's insane. And that's why glasses cost like fucking four hundred dollars when you can't see and you need prescription glasses. There's no competition because there's they literally own the factory, the building that they're selling them in, the product that they're making, like from top to bottom. Do you they think own every aspect of it? Do you think one fucking crazy person who's really fucking smart and intelligent and crafty can make his own lenses and build his own business to compete with? I, I don't. I guess no chance. You don't think that'll work? Mm-mm. You think he'll get killed before? <laughs> this company. <laughs> you happen. listen to this guy talk about. The acquisition of Oakley. The the woman was like, this is on 60 Minutes. She was like, so eventually you pressured Oakley's in, into selling to you. Like they threatened to take them out of all the stores, like all the sunglass huts, like all the Macy's. It like, And he's like, well, in negotiations, sometimes pressure is necessary for you to see what is ultimately right to do. 
<laughs> yeah, wow. dude, it was freaking and then crazy. He, and then she was like, so you're saying you did pressure them? No. They just decided what was best <laughs> like wow. shit like yeah. that like it's like crazy that's literally exactly and, and it said. sounded literally just like that like if he wanted you gone i own i own glasses like that's like if he this is that guy he's like glasses all around the world everywhere i own those i own glasses what a crook like when you think about shoes you know you've got like nike adidas don't get me wrong all these shoe companies can lead back to the same corporation you know but there's still diversity in, or at least the illusion of diversity, you know? But imagine being like all the pants and all the different types of pants, all designers, all pants everywhere, one creator. And But that's what there is with glasses. Yeah, and it's like if you get big enough, then you get bought out. What's even crazier is you think that Chanel or Prada or something like that has a big say in their line, but the only say they get is post-design. So... The designers at this at the main corporation send like Prada designs, and they approve those designs. So, or they make changes and suggestions and stuff. But literally, the design isn't even coming from them. It's like every ounce of the glass of every pair of glasses basically starts and ends at the same place. Freaking insane, dude! That's nuts. It's crazy. Oh my god. Could you imagine? Think about paying two hundred dollars for you know Ray, some Ray Bans. Don't get me wrong. <coughs> yeah, look dope. <laughs> <laughs> but are they two hundred dollars worth of dope? No, exactly. They literally can charge whatever they want. That's not cool. I don't like that at all. But that's the free market for you. Oh yeah, it's like <laughs> True. also not in America, like in Italy. Oh, that's why you gave it the accent. I was like, why is he talking? I mean, it's very appropriate for, <laughs> was this, for the situation. This guy didn't sound Italian. He sounded Polish or something. He sounded more, Polish Russian. Or something. <laughs> he like sounded he more like, like, you know, we could do, we could, you know, we <laughs> could not exist. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. I think you did it better. <laughs> <laughs> that was exactly right. Are you going to kill me? No, 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 no. Nothing so brash. You just cease to exist. <laughs> <laughs> in the metaphysical sense, the physical sense, it turned it turned into and then it turned into a New Yorker. In the physical sense, uh, no more. <laughs> Just you die. Oh God, my God. Uh, speaking of weird fucking conspiracy shit, um, I'm watching another documentary on Netflix called The Keepers. Haven't seen this. It's fucking. Crazy. It's about uh, a murdered nun, an unsolved murder, still to this day. To... Robert Durst did it. Oh, dude. Did you finally watch the Jinx? <laughs> I'll watch the Jinx. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I may or may not have. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that guy is like the king of plausible deniability. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what they want you to think. <laughs> like, <that's laughs> they want you to think that I killed her. His like eyes look like... He has no pupils. Wait, is that Isn't Robert Durst you're impersonating? Yeah. <laughs> I just got a, a piece of it. You didn't get, oh, man. Uh, I walked in. I was like, what the fuck are you watching? <laughs> just <laughs> crazy old man <laughs> talking. Just murder. <laughs> but it's so funny. You just look at that guy. He's like, oh, yeah, murderer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, you have to watch a whole, like, two hours. Dude, yeah, I, I was looking at that guy like, Eli Roth could learn from this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to fucking freak someone out. Look like this guy. <laughs> You want to come down and shoot a movie? It was so nuts when I started but, watching that doc, and I was like, practicing is like what he's gonna say and how to say it because he doesn't know how to express emotion because he's a psychopath, <laughs> <laughs> a fucking psychopath. But his eyes. I you ever not, seen those pictures I of? Re- I do not remember. I don't. Re- I don't remember <laughs> <laughs> what happened. <laughs> I do not like. What the fuck are you doing? Like. Uh, that- <laughs> Don't mess this up. But then sometimes, yeah. <laughs> but, th- but then sometimes he'll say something that's oddly charming, and you're like, "Oh, I kind of like this guy. No, oh, he's funny." The thing <laughs> oh, is, he's a like, it's so especially when it's all dr- like dramatized, like that uh, documentary is, it's easy to start to empathize with him because he has had such a fucked up life. Mm-hmm. But he also chopped a man's body. <laughs> <laughs> in, like in many parts like this like, sh- shit did this was not like a chop 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 
done. This was like hours were dedicated to severing bone and muscle and tendon as, and removing a man's face that he had shot and cutting his head off. Like, this is fucked up. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And I was about to say about his eyes. His eyes were similar. Have you ever seen pictures of men and women who, before they go to war and then after they go to war, like after they come back and after they've seen oh, some yeah. shit? I've seen some of those. And their eyes are so much different than they were before they, they took the, like, it's, it's, you can tell, like, they've seen some shit. Right. Like, there's such, like, a, there's, there's a different person in there now. Yeah. You know? And it's the same world. kind of thing I saw. And I'm not to say that those people are, you know, sadistic murderers like fucking him, but it's like those, when, he's obviously seen some shit that's obviously turned him into who he is. Oh, yeah. It's fucking crazy. By the way, you should watch that documentary, Dane. Even though you probably know the the, yeah, the I ending think I of walked it in now. on the end of it, but uh, yeah, it looked really <clears throat> really intense. Just that ending. That ending was you're just like left with your jaw open. Yeah, he goes on trial this year. Yes, he does. For the murder of his best friend. What's according to him? Um, yeah, and he shot her in the back of the head. Well, that's what they're going to say. The prosecutors are going to say. It's like, right. well, that's yeah. how she was shot. She was shot close close up, back of the head, yeah. like Jeez. a fucking assassin. <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah, what is her name? Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, she's the mob boss's daughter. Like, yeah. That major mob boss. Um, yeah. It's, oh, shit. Unless I started some shit. I don't know. I'm curious. I do know that Susan Berman, that was her name. Hmm. Can't believe that came good memory. Me. Wow. Um I do know that yeah, Susan Berman was like, you know, the only person, according to all of this intel, that had any information on his ex wife or wife, Kathy Durst or whatever. Yeah. Did you ever watch the movie that that documentary was based on? I well did. the the uh, they made the movie the, and then they made the documentary. Right, the Jarecki Janicki or It was an all right movie, but it was starring Ryan Gosling, if I'm not mistaken. What was that? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Did your headphones? We just have entered in? space. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one second. Yeah, that, I don't know about you guys, but I'm flying right now. We are live, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need to check on the camera anyway. <laughs> well, uh, Run out of memory card space. Yeah, you make sure you got at least a lot of gigs <laughs> left in there. Because it's going to be long. It's going to be long. It's off, isn't it? <laughs> Get what? the fuck out of here. It's off? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that you didn't record it. No, it was recording. Now, let's see. Maybe it, maybe it canceled for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh man are you son of a bitch are you kidding me <laughs> we had a we had a technical difficulty with the <laughs> fancy camera that dane <laughs> insisted on using <laughs> instead of my iphone could have just done the iphone <laughs> we could have just used the iphone everything could have been good <laughs> we could you know no problems turns out jim can't hit the record button <laughs> Should have sent someone else. <laughs> <laughs> At least we found out in the middle of the podcast and not towards the end where. <laughs> we definitely haven't been talking for <laughs> a half an hour already. <laughs> you guys didn't miss a damn thing. No, definitely not. Oh podcast is just now beginning. <laughs> my beer is empty, however. <laughs> I'm just thinking about like all the you talking to the camera thing. <laughs> And the camera was never on. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Well, the folks missed some, some good conversation. Really we good. need to catch you up to speed, okay? <laughs> well, the audio will be fine. The Bobby audio Durst. Is <laughs> Robert Durst is Dude. going on trial. Susan uh, Berman. <laughs> Susan Berman's dead. 1985 uh, was the best year. <laughs> yeah, uh, Spider Man was okay in in James standards. <laughs> it was good. It, was it wasn't good. awesome. Uh, Hugh Jackman will be replaced by Ruby Rose. Uh, in your opinion, and just in my opinion, <laughs> I think they should go with a female lead for the next Wolverine. 
And I think we, we went into Scientology a little bit. Scientology. We went, oh yeah, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Tom's very short. <laughs> very short. He's only a foot. He's only a foot taller. We definitely didn't talk about Tom Cruise for like fifteen straight minutes. <laughs> Tom Cruise. He's is a only hard a, worker. <laughs> he's he works very hard. Hard worker. I never. You know what movie of his I actually wanted to watch was uh, Day After Tomorrow, which has now changed its name to something else. Is that a new movie coming out? Oh no! I it's think it the was, day after. I think oh, you mean the Live Die Repeat? Yeah, yeah. No, it's no. The day after tomorrow is the movie where the, the world talk, comes to the wait, end. Is it called the day after tomorrow? No, it's where the Earth freezes. Oh yeah. Oh okay. It's not the uh, day after tomorrow. What's his name? Uh, it's uh. It, I think they Kevin, changed it to Live Die Repeat. The dad in that movie. I don't think it's Kevin Cosner. I think it's the guy who's from Braveheart. Not Braveheart, but uh, <laughs> Dragonheart. No Gibson? No, no. We, uh, 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 Sean Connery? I do it for the pleasure. Uh, what's his fucking name? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, what is his name? Um, his brother is the dude in Christmas Story. Vegas Sto- Vacation. No, in Vegas, yeah, Christmas Vacation. Is, golly, I've drawn a blank. Oh, my gosh. That's going to kill me. <laughs> Uh, but that fucking dude, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, I think it's him, and <clears throat> and then. Uh, but you're right, Jake Hillenhaller. It's not the day after tomorrow. It's yeah, and they changed it to live, die, repeat. But it was something named before that. Yeah. Anyway. It was named after I think a anime it, or a manga. A, a manga. It was a manga originally, and apparently people who watch that movie say it's like really, really fucking good, and it's oh, something. I've seen it's it. something it's that really great. Never really. You've seen it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it didn't do well in theaters, but yeah. I thought it was awesome. Live, Die, Repeat. Yeah, that yeah. movie or something. Yeah, um, Emily Blunt also co-stars. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's incredible. We watched some behind the scenes on it actually, and uh, they've got these big ass like, kind of looks like uh, the suits from Avatar a little bit, but it's like a like a robotic like, it's like a fighting yeah, they gear. Built these suits for the for each person in the army they to like be able like to battle to battle aliens, and so they've got all these guns and like and but like, it's all metal. But they really built them. Really? Like they're real. They're not but CGI. they don't work. <laughs> so all of the movements are the actors actually hoisting and lifting this 100-pound suit to make it look like the suit is lifting them. What? And they, did, and they shot in these suits like almost the entire movie. That's like, crazy. <laughs> and another thing that's crazy is uh, the, the director, I guess, was like... Like they were like doing... And then behind the scenes, like he's like... Uh, up at like five in the morning playing tennis and they're like why are you like up so early exercising he's like uh i'm working with tom cruise i gotta get ready (laughs) yeah they said there's like this scene that uh the entire cast and crew are basically all all in the military and they're marching along this long stretch uh and it's a very long shot and so on the day that they shot it to reset Tom Cruise got like offered some money or something like that for to anyone who could beat him back to the mark. Wow. Like to the starting position for the to get ready for the next shot. So like they'd shoot and they'd they'd yell cut and then they'd literally run back in these big ass suits to where the starting point is in order to like get more footage. Uh like Tom Cruise just made this bet just so that they could get more shots out of the people and like have everyone like giving them incentive to work harder, I guess. It's actually brilliant. <laughs> but it's cra- it's just crazy that Tom Cruise would care that much. Like he's not getting anything from I mean he oh, is a yeah. star actor, but like he's working that hard, like he's no, setting dude. the bar. I mean, I don't want to like I don't want it to make it seem like I'm disparaging Tom Cruise as a horrible human being. I mean, I'm, I'm he's got to be like fucking insanely passionate about movies because he's so fucking good. <laughs> Think about how long we have been talking about uh, Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Tom Cruise. Um, hey, <laughs> this is podcasting. <laughs> we don't. There's no. There's no topics here. Whatever comes, <laughs> it comes. Damn it! And Tom Cruise, he's you're coming. coming. <laughs> Oswald shit. I didn't like that movie. Oh, really? Boy. Yeah. I watched that. So that I, I actually Kiki. walked out. And, I actually walked out of that movie. Oh, you Tell saw you it the in theaters. That was, yeah, I saw it in theaters. I think I was a. <laughs> How old were you when that movie came out? I don't know. Young. Young enough to sneak into the theater to see it because it yeah. was a porno. <laughs> Man, yeah. 
I think it back was, in our I day, think it was, was I think pornography. It was, no, it was, you went to see that movie if you wanted to jerk it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I watched Cranked a little bit of it, and I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, I don't get the plot of this story. And so we walked out. <laughs> I feel like it was a date. I'm pretty sure that was the beginning of Scientology. That, that <laughs> you like show up in masks and gang bang someone's wife. Yeah, it kind of looks like Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> the movie. Scientology, the movie. <laughs> Actually, the, that the whole idea <laughs> of Scientology should be a movie with like Xenu coming down. They should make it like a... Isn't Xenu like the thing from Ghostbusters? No, you're thinking of... No, that's Zeno. Uh, uh, fucking um, blanking now. Gosh, terrible in my memory today. Yeah, what have I done? <laughs> I am. I remember her because it's like that. That girl with the flat top. She comes out and says her name. I am. Yeah. They knew who she was. It's not Zeno though. <laughs> it's not. It's. It starts with the Z though. They knew who she was. Zulu. Zulu. You sure it's not Zulu? It's not Zulu. Zulu. It's not Zulu. Zool. Zool. That's right. <laughs> there you go. Everyone who's listening to it, it's Zool, you fucks. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking idiot. With the U, the L, the U, I had to rearrange that shit. <laughs> I was like, all right. Zool. It's all in there. Just got to fix it up. Something scrambled up there. <laughs> 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 so I'm meaning to talk to you guys about this. You guys are moving to LA. Yes, we soon. are. And you've lived in Nashville for ten years. As long as as long as ten I have, years. as long as we have. Yep. Uh, I've known you guys for that. For yeah, for about for basically for that basically long. Basically that long. Basically that long. Yeah. What? You're le- you're moving at a time where like so many other people are moving here. Like what's what is it about LA that's alluring besides the whole like I don't know like what what's making you number one, Zeb Beach, yeah, number two, Zawaja, <laughs> yeah. See, you actually told me when we were we were discussing this that we were actually Man, sunny days are happier Zawaja. days. Like you 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 take them for granted. Like this year, Nashville has been like fucking Seattle. It's ridiculous. It's it's rained so many more times than it hasn't rained. It's so at least so it seems, and it's definitely overcast all the fucking time. So it just gets you know to the point where every day kind of feels like a Zoloft commercial. <laughs> <laughs> and I need some fucking happy pills, man. <laughs> How, try Zoloft now, now. now. <laughs> I, uh, is it like the opportunity? Yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity. I mean, that's a big part of it. Um, I mean, for both of us, uh, I think for Jim, especially as a rapper, it's going to have a a bigger network of people to write with and collaborate with. And I think, too, you're right, like you coming from the South to L.A. Yeah, I think that's going to have a lot of And especially as a rapper, too. Well, it definitely makes you seem dumber. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know, maybe. No, I think it'll have a lot of appeal. Like just the uh, hey, buddy, standing out <laughs> like outside of the the normal crowd of the day to day that yeah. everyone in that city sees. And especially since what you bring to the table is a lot more musical, in my eyes. Again, I'm not you know a part of the the hip hop I mean, culture, it and, and I don't really follow it that often. But from what I've seen from you guys, like I was looking at your on your YouTube channel, your personal YouTube channel, and you did that that song, Learn. Oh yeah, and it was through Apple Loops, and you were looping the different parts every four measures, and you were playing a different part, and then play it, and then then record it and play it at live. Yeah, I think and that's loop, really impressive. Looper is what it's called. Huh? Lo- looper. Looper. I'll plug the app again because it's still a dope <clears> app. <throat> yeah, I don't know. I had it's just such a uh, a good app, and I felt inspired to. But that shit like that is we really doing. cool, and like. I think if you you know you bring stuff like that to the table, especially to the rap game, it's like, in my eyes, I don't think you see that very often. Yeah, it just like kind of adds a new it defi- criteria yeah. for being talented. Like, yeah, and you guys yeah. always bring something different to to that genre to me. Um, like when I see you guys live and you have the you have the drum set up in such a weird, cool way where they're they're like this and you're playing it like a marching setup, but it's still drums and you're playing hip hop to it, like yeah. that. That's really cool. As a, as a musician, as a musician, I see that and I'm like that's fucking cool. 
Yeah. Well, I think that uh, the musicality behind hip hop has faded big time. And I honestly think that the last real musician in hip hop was Kanye. Well, J. Cole is, does a lot of his own production, but he doesn't push himself forward that way. What about Chance the Rapper? I really don't. I don't really know about Chance the Rapper. Like, I, can, I don't know if he's behind all of his production. If he's a musician on that level, I'm sure he is. You know what I mean? But what I mean, f- as far as the hip hop culture goes, there's not been a big push of someone who's the whole like quote unquote whole package. Like right now, it's like it's prime to be a rapper on someone else's production, like producer. X DJ X is featuring <laughs> DJ X. X. Yeah, <laughs> is featuring this rapper. Like it's like you know what I mean. This type of cross pollination between genres, in my opinion, is homogenizing the sound of music, and you don't really have that. Like you don't have that one individual like Kanye was that's going to say, "I think music should go in this direction," and. I just hope that as music starts to progress in this genre, as it does over the next two or three years, that it doesn't take the route that rock and roll took when it diversified. When all of a sudden there was, we went from this is rock and roll to this is rock and roll, hard rock and roll, metal, thrash, punk, and it like broken all these sub genres. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what hip hop's doing. It's like now, well, we call this is this is hip hop, and this is like trap, and this is this. That's the beginning to me of either someone steps up and fixes this little crack in the pavement, or it's it's going to be the end of the genre for a little bit. People, when you start to put out a bad product, and it isn't about the art moving forward because I believe in the artists who originated this genre. I believe in artists like future where I look at this person and I go, this person created something when this wasn't happening yet. To me, that's what an artist that we need 40 other rappers jumping up on that, on the coattails of that, just because this is what's hot right now is what kills any industry. I hope that the, as the genre moves forward that we have sooner than later a new Kanye. And I don't mean that Kanye is out of the game or out of the pictures. I just mean someone to compete with him. Bro, he's with the he's... Kardashians. Okay, I think we, it's safe to say that we've lost Kanye. <laughs> uh, either that he's just going to fall off the face of the planet or he's going to become a woman. <laughs> but I mean, you know, think about it. Like who's... When... I was coming up, we had Timberland. Damn, Timberland. You know what I mean? We have Pharrell. Not that we don't still have Pharrell. He's like, you know, immortal. <laughs> um, and Timberland's doing a lot, like with Empire and stuff. They're both still at it, but they're not like the celebrities that, you know what I mean? Like they're not like, hey, it's, you can tell be, this is what it's about to be a producer. Like, yeah. they were like, you know, I remember like some of Timberland's diss tracks being like, you know, I get a half a mil for my beats. You get a couple grand. Like there was this, this uh, competition between producers. Now there's this, excuse me, I'm burping. (laughs) There's all this like collaboration. Not that collaboration isn't, it's good in small quantities, but the more you collaborate, the more you diversify yourself. And if everyone continues to only do that, then ultimately everything will homogenize. Huh. It's kind of like dropping a drop of food coloring in Jell-O. If you don't mess with it, then that food coloring will stay there and be beautiful. <laughs> but if you start to stir it before long, <clears throat> you can, everything's, you know, the color of the food coloring. That's a beautiful analogy. Yeah, it works perfect. I just came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> and all, But like, you, and also what like you're doing with the visuals, because you're um, like become this really amazing videographer in this very short time. Hey, thank you. Like, what did you start? You picked it up, what, two years ago? Yeah, actually, I think that shooting for you, you were the first person I shot for outside of what we were doing. Oh, yeah, by the way, without these two, the whole Attack on Titan video wouldn't even be a thing. (laughs) Yeah. 
such a fun video. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. And now that you're leaving and leaving to my own devices, it's going to take me at least five years to do the same thing. So be patient. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll pick it up quick. You already you've already made quite the progress on your video I'm getting skills. It. I'm, and... I'm getting it a little bit. I just need to get a green screen and some of these professional looking lights thank you you made this podcast look a lot more professional than it has ever been like it's in the here black the, right here this you're at the explicit material podcast <laughs> i'm here with shane but uh um, if we had the headphones we'd uh, be a lot better off oh, but yeah. but what i was saying is like you know with the visual aspect you guys you know with the ideas the the with the music video ideas that i saw in there like making it more like cinematic and with those ideas that you bring to the table like it's that stuff is cool and interesting. Like yeah. a lot, a lot of people just, it's, it's not just now, nowadays it's like, if you have the talent to do something, it's not about the talent anymore. It has to, you have to do something else. You have to be a jack of all trades and not necessarily be a master of one. Right. You know? Yeah, definitely. Especially for, you know, getting started. Uh, there's so many roles you have to play. Like if you're just starting out, you can't be your, you know, you don't have a manager. You don't have all these people to do these other roles. You have to be those roles until something pops out and uh from that you know just learn this other uh uh skill that's just been really awesome and i've like really fell in love with it and uh, it's just worked perfectly uh in the dynamic of like how visual he writes his music and and then this skill being added to the mix and uh pushing it one step further at a time yeah it's like being like imagine you have to stand behind every word you write in your music because every word you write comes conceptually with an idea. It's not just pointless rhymes. You know what right. I mean? Being able to step outside of the box of just writing rhyme or you know this rhyme craft literally puts you into this place of everything has to make everything has to make sense now, which. A lot of rappers, you know, write with that in mind, but that's not the kind of hip hop I like come from. You know what I mean? So with but with this album, since we were writing it from a visual standpoint, it really put this focus on me to like craft one concept amongst you know, I think the EP is just six songs, six different, you know, ideas that all exist in this universe. Every album we do is kind of conceptual like that but we came up with this video idea that and it's the video that we're working on literally the entire album came from talking about this video we want to shoot that wasn't a music video it was going to be just like a short film and this album basically holographic is the soundtrack to that see that's fucking dope that's cool. See, that's like thinking outside the fucking box. But I didn't want to like I thought when I was approaching it conceptually I wanted certain things the the sound of each track to visually match the storyline, but I wanted the subject matter of each song to be about something crucially important to me in my life versus writing it like from a third person perspective. Right. So, like, 1985, I mean, the very first thing that anybody wants to talk about is, like, <clears throat> how old are you? Like, is this affecting you? Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you're too old you're to this. You're whatever. That, 1985 addresses that. Um, then there's cannabis, which I am an advocate for. <laughs> and um, it's actually being an advocate, despite it, you know, despite it in a lot of a lot of this culture being cool faces lots of, you face lots of obstacles because of it. Mm -hmm. People feel so off put by something that I believe should already be legal. I think that's changing, but slowly, slowly. Yeah. State by state. I was in Oregon recently and it was legalized there. Oh, we really? Went, we went to the first, when we walked, because you know me, I don't smoke, you know, uh, so like we, I walk in there and I'm like, it's so crazy. Like it's totally legal in this state. I'm not doing anything wrong, but I walk in in this, in this really nice place. Every, every, the, 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 the 
patrons, not the patrons, but the girls at the counter were really nice, and they were like, hey, how's it going? What can I get for you guys? Like a fucking Burger King. Like, oh, not a Burger King, but like, you know, because they're not really nice to you. But um, <laughs> they're like, what the fuck do you want? You want? Get the fuck out of here. Um, our, our smoothie but machine's like, down. Yeah, so she's like, so I explained to her, I was like, I don't really smoke that often. Every time I smoke, you know, I just fall asleep and become not talkative and it's like oh you're looking for this and so she hooked you up with she that hooked good, me up good. yeah and it was like really cool and really informative and like we got our stuff and we wa- walked out into the beach and so you didn't need did to get a card thing. or anything huh you don't have to have a card or nope, anything it's rec- recreationally legal oh wow that and washington too california becomes effective in 2018 and dude you know what's crazy i just saw this on my facebook um nevada just recreationally legalized it and they don't have enough supply. They're out. Oh crap. Yeah. They're like, and so the governor, <laughs> the governor, if I'm not mistaken, has Colorado. announced, has announced the state of emergency <laughs> based Whoa. on, the, based on being out of marijuana. That's crazy. Which is fucking crazy. All the, no one started eating anymore. <laughs> I can't All eat. the like I pizza hut sleep. started going out of business. <laughs> Everyone's awake twenty four hours a day. Yeah, yeah. So like, what do I do? Calm down. It's, it's slow. I'm so stressed out. <laughs> it's slowly changing, but you know, again, like even when all this change is happening and all statewide, you still have shit like the federal government recently putting CBD oil on the Schedule 1 list, the same with cocaine. Oh, right. You fucking idiots. It's not, it's well, not even psychoactive. Marijuana already is on the... Which is also stupid. On, on the Schedule 1 list, yeah. Um, it's crazy. Yeah, it's totally crazy. It's, it's insane. It's... Is it for, like, a financial gain or what? It's propaganda fed by... Actually, yeah, speak of Joe, Joe Rogan, I actually think I heard this on the Joe Rogan podcast. It's the man who sought to end cannabis, or, or the man, let's do it from the other perspective, the man who was using cannabis to like fund his clothing and all of this stuff was putting the cotton field owner guy... Out of business. Out of business. Mm-hmm. And this guy owned a paper. And so this guy... It was, it was who, hemp. Yeah, right? hemp versus hemp. cotton, but yeah. it's the same, you know. Yeah, same sort of plant. Thing. Yeah, ish, and basically, this guy owned a paper, and he started publishing like negative things about hemp. what was called hemp. But he started to call it marijuana, which at the time was Spanish for you know tobacco, or like a Mexican tobacco. Yeah, so, yeah, and yeah, from there it was like mar. Marijuana causes people to like rape your children. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like crazy. yeah. He went so that dude went so far as to say that's why he called it marijuana is because you know at that time people I guess didn't like Latinos or Mexicans and so yeah he would put like ads up saying like you know marijuana will cause Mexicans to you know or, or causing Mexicans to rape your wives and shit right. like that. It's fucking crazy. And so this dickhole is the reason why uh, marijuana is still illegal. So, yeah, it, it became so Money. illegal that Money. when it's something yeah. Schedule 1, you can't study it, really. Right. You, Not in there, big it's... quantities. You have no idea. <clears throat> um, and so because of that, th- this plant's unknown still. It's also, you know, it's not. this isn't a conspiracy either. It's very obvious that the pharmaceutical industry has very oh, much yeah. to gain by keeping it When there's it literally illegal. zero deaths associated with from cannabis at all, zero i mean that's like a hard record to keep and you're starting to and you're starting to hear like in states that have it recreationally legal you're starting to hear a little bit of propaganda now like oh we're starting to have more cases of uh hospital visits because marijuana is legalized driving and and wrecking or yeah and they're and and like yeah but did anyone die (laughs) yeah right also (laughs) You know, tomato, tomato. Look at fucking alcohol. I know. And that's all you have to say to people. Alcohol is a socially acceptable What, did somebody form. get in an accident while they're high, like driving five miles an hour? <laughs> no. They run into their garage. Yeah. I'm going so fast. <laughs> 20,000 more. <laughs> 20, Officer. 20,000 more garages have been damaged since, <laughs> since yeah. marijuana has been legalized. I got in my car. I went to work. I got out of my car. I had no car. <laughs> I'd been standing in a thorn bush. <laughs> I was so high. 
<laughs> potato chip sales are through the roof in this county. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pringles opens up new. Uh, it's so it's just their own ridiculous. store. It's I Pringles. would go taco stands. You know, spread like wildfire. This is this is a controversial point that I've been saying to my friends, and people look at me like I'm crazy. But I would go as far as to say you probably should just legalize all drugs. No, I agree. And all you know why I say that legal. is because we're like, well, what if you know people get addicted? And I understand that people the, do get addicted. And let them get addicted to something that we know is as safe as that deadly addictive substance can be. Uh, versus totally like agree. there might be kitty litter or tinfoil in it. <laughs> or like all these kids like, are like you know there was a there's a there's cases of kids drinking bleach yeah that happened and then there's these kids that would tie shit like dog shit or person shit i can't it was feces they would tie it in a bag and then sniff it and they would get high off of that you fucking th- that's what because marijuana is illegal if they just give <laughs> those kids the a joint things the nostrils it's worth it though. the mom comes in it smells like shit in here. <laughs> Y'all been huffing again? <laughs> like, that actually what is happened. fucking worse? <laughs> Your kid just smells like, are like poop. fucking Kenny from South Park. <laughs> <laughs> He's high from the shit. <laughs> Jeez, that's disgusting. Well, I know. I mean, yeah, oh, dude, that's good right there. I just think that it's a good hit. if people got a lot of corn in it, if, if a person <laughs> it's a grass-fed diet with a grain finish, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, people are just people. If people want to get high, they're going to get high. They're going to find yeah. a way to get right. high. So just let them do. Not it. Not to mean, mention, I used to just when I when I was a kid, pump the gas just so I could stand next to the gas thing. The gas you'd be so good lit. Kid, oh, that smells so good. Can't you still? <laughs> Why does it? What is it like? Seasoned with sugar? Why is it such a <laughs> Sweet, so delicious. delicious smell when you're a kid. You're like walking around like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Brain cells just oozing out of your nose. I, I mean, more. not to mention that, you know, there's a gazillion plants out there that are still undiscovered. Could you imagine if someone discovered just some guy who lives in oh, near the jungle somewhere, you know, and he finds this, finds this new plant and says, I'm going to fucking smoke this, see what happens. Turns out to be the next... I don't know, next big drug. And he's like, wow, you get fucking high off of this. And then he starts selling it. And it's not, you can't really illegalize it because it doesn't have any criminals yeah. that are, you know, so what are you going to do? You know, that dude now has the next opium, you know, and he just, he, he sells it, you know, <laughs> it, shit like this continues to pop up. So it's like, I don't know. It's pretty risky though, huffing a plant that no one knows what it's going to do. Oh yeah. <laughs> of course, maybe you t- at least touch it to make sure it doesn't like. Well, people do that, man. People yeah, like, I was uh, smoking this plant and my dick fell off. Well, how do you think we all <laughs> know that, like, is, isn't it, like, if you think about it, like... The name of the plant was Won't Have a Dictus. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how, like, we have the, the village idiot try out, like, hey, so uh, we've nominated you to smoke that. Yeah, but I, I, I really so. don't want to, no, you're going to smoke that. I, I think it was more like wildfire was happening, you know? They're running. Oh shit! Then they're like, you know, this ain't that hot. <laughs> I'm pretty cool, actually. And they're like, what? What is this skunky smell? As the marijuana bushes start burning, and they're like, oh shit, we need to smoke this. And that's how it went down. You know, a uh, certain Jewish. That's a true story. I, I learned this in the Joe Rogan <laughs> podcast too. If anyone doesn't listen to that podcast, they should because it's awesome. But um, apparently. Uh, Jewish scholars, some Jewish scholars are are pretty much convinced that the uh, burning bush that Moses saw was a cannabis bush, and he came down with no, it wasn't cannabis. It was the acacia tree, which has high levels of DMT in it, which is a oh, very high level hallucinogen yeah. that just makes you go into another dimension, kind of thing. <clears throat> and so, but you know that the people who do DMT are pretty much convinced that there is. Another dimension yeah. that they enter. I've never done it. So, but like, but it, it very well could be. It very well could be something that science just can't explain. I want to do the ayahuasca and tea. I'm not looking forward to the endless diarrhea part. Wild tripping balls. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Are you just sitting there warm in your own puddle? <laughs> a lot of everyone's <laughs> allergic to mushrooms in that way. No, 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 no. It just, this hallucinogenic just makes you Oh, shit. does it? 
Well, DMT is in a lot of stuff. The tea, it's the just, ayahuasca tea. Is but you need to you need oh, to take yeah, yeah. you need to take a certain substance to block the enzymes that block the substance that make you high. So you take this thing, you let it sit in your stomach or whatever, and what that does is, and then you drink the ayahuasca tree, or ayahuasca tree, the ayahuasca tea, and then because you drank or ate this other substance that blocks or that allows the ayahuasca to hit your brain then you're fucking tripping. Right. You know what I'm saying? So so there's a little bit involved. There's a little bit yeah, of chemistry another, involved. It's I not think like there's you another pick it up thing joint. besides DMT in the ayahuasca and tea that's also hall- and hallucinogenic. Um there's probably many compounds in there, but needless to say it's just crazy how you powerful meet Mother the mind Earth is. <laughs> is what the... Needless to say that again, if all Mother drugs were legalized, if all drugs name. were legalized, we would you know do you imagine if Donald Trump were were to you know just fucking smoke a joint, dude? Let's relax. Yeah. I, I bet he smoked the joint before. There ain't no doubt he smoked the joint. That man's smoked the joint out of a woman's pussy before. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, sugar. <laughs> I'm, what am I paying you for? <laughs> I, I'm sh- as he like blew it back into her. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck am I paying this bitch for? <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. Get your pussy out of here. <laughs> Sorry. But your, your, your Donald Trump uh, impression spot on. Might friend. have to edit some of this. Uh, I went full Donald Trump. Shit. In case I decide to run for office. <laughs> I guess not. I guess it's totally fine if you just play it off well. No, I mean, get rid of all the nice stuff. <laughs> keep keep the I know talk about I, I know how to do this. marijuana pussy <laughs> in, in there. <laughs> Who do you want as president? <laughs> this man? <laughs> like is that Hulk Hogan? What's it? Snap would into you, a Slim Jim? Maybe. Would you would you vote for Hulk Hulk Hogan? <laughs> I should certainly would. Are you kidding? Somebody like that as president. Freaking uh, the Rock. Damn. Yeah. I, I would totally vote for the Rock. I would definitely vote for the Rock. I would absolutely vote because all you have There's to say no is doubt. like. <laughs> Are you kidding me? He rides in on a motorcycle. <laughs> all he would have to. He doesn't say have was, to threaten with like the pen and paper anymore. <laughs> I'll write your country. I'll you find do. you. Beat your ass. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll kick your candy ass straight because <laughs> I am the people's champ. Yeah. He is the people's champ. <laughs> Crowd's going crazy. So, like, I mean, that would totally work, too. And at some level, it's kind of sad because we're like, it's so not intellectual. Like, that portrayal of like, he's, he's, yeah, he's like a wrestler, the, the but next he's still he's he's a I would hard say, worker. I would say he's yeah he's he a lot worked more on intelligent. The only thing that ever really matters, your job and all that bullshit, that don't matter. Your body, your person, your self, your spirit, that's what matters. I agree. And the Rock is like all of those things. Oh, he's all of those things. He's Moana. <laughs> it Maui. ain't Mona. Maui. <laughs> he is the Scorpion King. He's the Scorpion King. He's a lot of things. He's the last man walking. Is that what the name of that movie is? Walking Tall? Walking Tall. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I think I combined the last man standing with the last man walking. The last man walking. That's a movie idea right there. The last man walking tall. It's a, it's in a, a different universe where ev- no one walks. Everyone runs. <laughs> yeah. Everyone bows. Oh, my Lord. Okay, I don't know what was going on. <laughs> what? what movie uh, are you thinking? I don't know what happened. <laughs> got weird. <laughs> got weird. What? I fucking went on, dude. I, this is way off subject, but I'm just going to keep it moving along here. I went off the deepest fucking rabbit hole the other day. And I haven't been into like ghosts or aliens. I'm just imagining a monster rabbit in your yard. <laughs> and you like... W- your truck was like <laughs> that went off the deepest rabbit hole. <laughs> it took me forever to get out. Had the cops call, get, you know, so the, this they had is, to bring this a crane is the perfect in. Perfect rabbit trail example. <laughs> rabbit trail inception right now. We're too deep in. <laughs> I can't remember the original topic. But man, I went the deepest rabbit hole the other day and just aliens. I just went because and even like I was just watching. Mentally? Well, it started you off. Got abducted by aliens. It started off. I was. I was. I had the day off of work, and then I was. I was trying to find this like documentary, and I found one. And it's called Unacknowledged. 
and it's about the this like the lead expert on U- UFO. Like he's like the lead ufologist, Damn and boy. he's <laughs> you know it just went off from that documentary. The whole which it was actually a pretty decent documentary. It was about all like the aviators and all the people who worked in the government who have seen things. And seeing things, and they went up to their superiors, and the superiors like, "You don't talk about this ever." And it was all these like, that's crazy, high-ranking officers, not just like Joe Schmo, redneck, you know, in the middle of Wyoming, you know, just it was these high-ranking officers that have really no reason to lie about, you know, seeing something that they obviously saw, and right, you know, so it was the whole documentary was about that whole thing, and um, yeah, but after that, I just went down the fucking deep deep end. And got got onto this one like ten minute documentary about the man who went the deepest ever in the Mar- the Mariana Trench. I think that's the deepest point right, that yeah, we know about. Right. James Cameron. James Cameron beat the record, but the right. first guy who did it in like the sixties or like during the Cold War or something. Yeah. I forget. Apparently, <clears throat> I don't know how substantiated this is, but like a, a, it's a YouTube. It's a YouTube documentary, so of, of course it you know it could be flat Earth shit, but it still <laughs> it still was like very fascinating to me. So the the official story is he went down, he saw like all these crazy new fish that we didn't didn't know existed. We've never been this far down in the in the ocean before, and and he comes back up and everything's fine, you know. But apparently there's like some Russian classified materials that just got declassified. And apparently, he, when he went down, he saw this big, giant oval shape with lights to his left, and it was following him. What? And then just that whole thought of like just being in that guy's shoes, like going the deepest that you've ever gone, yeah, that any human has ever gone. Like you have no idea what to expect, and you see all these crazy new like alien creatures, and and then all of a sudden you see this giant oblong ship looking like thing with lights. Yeah, that'd be wild, and like yeah. I was just like thinking and about you hear that. that deep horn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, the deep horn. <laughs> That's the one. Oh, man. That, Ooh, that scares the <laughs> shit out of me. Do you see those those like those YouTube videos on like the the sounds in the sky? That scares the shit out of me. Oh yeah, the There's sounds in the skies. That. Yeah, What's it like about? A, so it's like a phenomenon that's actually true. That actually there is like some weird like it almost is like a blowing horn, like a very. Like yeah, there's low... a couple of cities where people say they can. There's like a a low end hum. Oh yeah, that all the locals are like used to. Right. But then there's like YouTube videos that. that have these sounds, and they sound really, really unearthly, like really fucking crazy. And they're like scientists are saying, well, it's you know, it's the it's the the, the some scientific explanation about radiation and particles and it's making this sound and sound barrier can't handle it and some shit like that I cosmic don't know. jizz cosmic shit that <laughs> i just way goes away over my head but still like imagine if you're just you know in the woods somewhere and all of a sudden you hear like this weird fucking hum in the sky i'd be oh, no, terrified fuck that <laughs> i've i've seen the movies <laughs> Hell no. there's no good happy ending you're not getting taken to anywhere nice i'd start digging a hole and then I went to from hot to die in. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went from aliens to Bigfoot. Because I just want Bigfoot to be real. Can we just please can like oh, Bigfoot's real. That's my ex boss. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I might as well check the camera real quick. <laughs> uh, maybe I should check the camera. Yeah, maybe you're just you're Alright. All right. So if Where there's not we? anything we went down the alien rabbit hole and then Oh yeah. Yeah. We we can mm. But I did. I did want to. I did want to talk to you guys about something because you know I'm very close to you guys, and I'm really gonna miss you guys when you guys are gone. And I know, Likewise, we, you know, right? like you know, life is taking us like a. I, who are you? I, I, <laughs> what's your name again? I know life is like taking us a little bit. You know, separated a little bit. You know, and and now it's really gonna separate us because you guys are moving. Um, but what's you know what's? It's just what's, a place to visit, man. Yeah. Um. Are you gonna visit? Are you gonna, you know? Well, yeah. Katie's family lives here, so, so okay. they'll definitely be back. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Um, their addresses. <laughs> <laughs> their addresses. Um, what's like? What's the best case scenario? Like For moving? Yeah. Like what? What? What do you? What are your goals? Goal number one: eat. 
be able to eat some food. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? God damn, I'm hungry. <laughs> Actually, Jim, you know what's funny? Like, I know I told, I only mentioned this to you before, but I really do think that you should maybe do some like open mic gigs out there. There's, you know, there's a podcast I listen to called Kill Tony, and it's hilarious. It's amazing, and it just they they put all these names in a hat and they pick a name, and these and it's kind of like a a like a poor man's like American Idol, but instead of singing, it's comedians, and they come up and they do a minute of comedy, and they then they have these three comedians that kind of just judge your, you know, comedic routine and tell you, oh, you need to do this, or it's like your first time, wow, great, great, great job, or you know, uh, that was great for your first time, or they'll just say, you probably should never speak on a microphone ever, you, you're terrible, and you know, but in a funny yeah. way, this I'm not, say I'm, it I'm obviously <laughs> than their set was, I get it, <laughs> but like you're really funny and Basically, you come up you just with shit on them. <laughs> <laughs> I really think just for fun, I think you should do some they open think, mic stuff. These poor guys, they think they're funny, <laughs> and these assholes are tired of laughing. <laughs> you got to like push through that just to make them feel better, and then they shit all over their hopes and dreams. <laughs> But it's comedy, bro. You gotta pull the punch, pull with the punches. Yeah, no, you do. You if do I ever need get tired of being mic. shit on in the music industry, I'll definitely pop over and get shit on a little bit in the comedic industry. <laughs> <laughs> I personally love the smell of shit <laughs> and huffing it. <laughs> Wait, was that conversation recorded? <laughs> I hope the Huffett shit conversation was recorded. Oh, absolutely, it was. Yeah, that it was hundred percent. It was because 100%. that was a throwback. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go, comedic timing. That's, but like, you, you know, you show me some of your jokes that you just write, just be like, oh, oh I made yeah. up this joke. This, this is really funny. Yeah, but none of those can be told. Uh, yeah, I, was yeah. Like, I got but, a career. Yeah. <laughs> and other things I need to focus but, on. I don't. I don't know. It's but that's comedy though, and like, I think comedians are kind of saving. The you know st- comedians I- not not everything can be said by comedians, um, but comedians can say things and get away with it because freedom of speech. The whole point in really going into con- uh, comedy, in my opinion, is the art of expression, which is parallel to hip hop, which I think is why so many verses have punchlines. Yeah, or like what's his name, Little Dicky? Oh his yeah, name? yeah. Like he's hilarious. <laughs> he should be a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, like, like, he's, he's an like, amazing. Get what, I get what he's doing, though. <laughs> yeah, I watched that interview where he's talking about like, well, a bunch of interviews actually, where he like basically hates being put into this comedic category because he like wants to be respected as a real rapper. But is, I think he's, jo- but it's, like, uh, he so obviously jokey. is joking. He's, I don't he's, think is he, he is. He's, is he not trolling? Like, he, I've it, watched like several different like speeches of him talking about it. Really. Yeah, and he like wants to be revered as just a great rapper. Well, he is a great rapper. I don't I mean, think is, anyone's taking like, that away from him. He's not being revered that way because it's all just comedy. Right. Well, the thing is, is that well, Eminem was kind of that way. Like, isn't that what made him? Like, I think a part of what made Eminem so good. What? Not to mention that he's. I mean, probably... if Lil Dicky like shaved his head bald <laughs> and got some like intimidating tattoos, then he could be taken seriously. But if you look, you know what I mean. Like, not to mention that you his look like as. You look like exactly like you sound. Hilarious. Yeah. But also it like but, plays part into it. And well look at his videos. His videos are one giant comedy routine. No, he yeah. like basically he has like he knows exactly what his market is and how to play to play to those comedic and strengths and his intelligence strengths, in my opinion. I think he kills what he's doing. I think that it's weird to say you want to be considered a great rapper, but the style of game you're playing is kind of in an, in its own area. Like, what he's doing kind of stands by itself. You know what I mean? It doesn't compete with anything. Yeah. Because there's not any let's just be funny. Uh, Besides, like, uh, what's the three people from SNL that started their group? The Lonely Island Boys? Right, like, that's kind of right. the closest that, to thing me, to me, yeah. The... Because that's the closest thing to the... I think that people you know, right, associate like so over him the top with the like... same type of, you know like a parody on the genre almost when in actuality it's very clever. Well, well, <clears throat> well again, the question's like, so like the ultimate goal, that was a rabbit trail. <laughs> well, are we on a rabbit trail? 
Hippity hoppity hippity. boo. We kind of went. We kind of went on the same road as that. I'm trying. I'm trying to Shane's bring it like back. Shane's the shepherd. I'm the yeah, shepherd. We're the guiding sheep. <laughs> guiding the sheep to the its its All destination. Right. So anyway, my question was. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your question? <laughs> my, yeah, but like what? So what's the goal? Like you're moving to L.A. You're fucking. You're gonna fuck a. Goat. Uh, you're you're gonna fuck a goat. <laughs> 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 you're gonna hit the ground Tons running. You get to do it. They'll let you do anything running. out there. Where is your first destination? What are you doing? Um, the first thing is, you know, what I think anyone who's moving to a new city should do is, you know, establish yourself in the city first. Figure out where you're at. You know what I mean? Figure out. Yeah, where you're gonna literally reach like the people that right. And so when you when I, yeah, I mean it like metaphorically. So where you're at in the city is both represented by your physical location, A, of what types of things are around you to be involved in as far as approaching like an industry standpoint, but also B, what mental state you're in. So for me, I think this move is going to be so freeing and liberating that I'm going to have to put pressure on myself not to jump the gun before everything we're working on and have been working on is ready right it'll, it'll, it'll give you like new like you're in a new city yeah in a new it's gonna environment. like oh, you're it's gonna be exciting re, yeah rekindle like, the flame if you doing will. all the things that you're doing now will me make it more exciting because you're living you're, you're in a different environment you're like wow i'm actually doing it you know it's like a new right, beginning yeah. it's like a new yeah and i'm be really curious to see what your writing looks like after you're like in this new environment yeah like where that takes like, you waves in the music <laughs> okay <laughs> Maybe some ukulele. Are you guys going to live some right ukulele. somewhere near the beach? Of, like, where, where are you guys going to live? Actually, this weekend, uh, Laura is going to be going to sign on a house. That we don't know what house it is. Who, who is Laura for the people who are listening? Uh, she's my girlfriend. Okay. And, uh, so she, me who's and Laura, also moving with you. Right, and, yeah. And your girlfriend, Katie, is moving with you as well. Right, so we got our whole team, our squad. And that's, squad a, that's another thing, too, that's really cool is that it's not just... it Because it would be scary if it was just, like, you two. But even then, if it was... Just one. Like, oh, and those boys ain't gonna could you make imagine, it. Could you imagine moving to a, a brand? New, like <laughs> some people crazy? do. Some people do that. Some people like will move to a different place by themselves, by themselves, by themselves, by themselves. <laughs> and like, how scary would that be? You guys are going with like a, a family. You guys have each other to lean on and support each other. Like, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's gonna make it a lot, uh, a lot smoother of a transition for sure than it would be to be like totally alone, not being able to like you know just having to wait to meet new friends depending on where you're working or you know what other factors. Plus, we we know people. I hope I meet a new friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jordan will be out there. <laughs> yeah, I actually know quite a few people. Um, oh yeah, Arnold Cruz gonna be out there. You're gonna be out there soon. There's so many people back and forth from Nashville. It's like you're gonna I, want a ranch out there. Yeah, California, North Carolina. Are you trying to get a ranch? Yeah, I am, actually. Well, I mean, uh, it's basically for Ash, my wife. Um, she wants to be a wedding planner, and she wants to own her own ranch to rent it out. And it'd be like a wedding spot. Mm-hmm. That'd be perfect. Yeah, especially here. We already have a place in mind, or you know, a couple places we've seen. And Southern like, people love ranch on everything. Yeah. Plus, we want to get we want to get some animals and stuff, and get that uh, farming subsidy because you get tax breaks if uh, subsidized. Yeah. What kind of animals would y'all get? I don't know. The best tasting probably get some goats because goats are adorable <laughs> and Big annoying goats. all at the same um, time. Me and Laura actually <laughs> they, went to they a. Uh, up. <laughs> we went to. Well, a, that's why you keep them in the barn. You don't bring them inside the house. We went to this. They're uh, super smart. Dairy farm. Like right down the street, they had some uh, cheese tasting event with that where you get to hold baby goats. So Laura wanted to go. I was like, "Yeah, let's go." <laughs> I definitely didn't pick it out myself. <laughs> <laughs> it was totally his idea. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you get to hold these baby like baby goats. goats and like see how the goat uh, the goat milk process happens, which is very interesting. Yeah, not not too interesting. We uh, uh speaking can I ask? Do they suck on the goat titty? Basically, they put these little suckers up to the goat's titties and they suck them out. <laughs> kind of like any other animal, so it's right. really not that bizarre. <laughs> exactly what you expect. It's like a hose with a condom on one end, right? Not uh, somebody doing it by hand. When we uh, when me and tiny my tiny little finger <laughs> caught. When me and my wife 
went uh, vacationing to Portland, the first thing we saw the first day that we arrived in Portland, and this is like, I don't watch the show Portlandia, but I imagine this is what would be, this kind of event would be in the show. Um, the first thing we see in the morning, the first morning that we're in Port- Portland, we're walking right by this coffee shop, and this girl has this like black, small animal dog and it looked like a pug and i was like oh that's a cute little pug and then we walked closer we walked a little closer oh it's a baby pig on a leash oh whoa and we all freak out because it's the most cutest thing we've ever seen it's and it just it it, it, it oinks and everything <laughs> like oh my god it's a fucking baby pig on the street what the hell is going on it's, her name i forget what her name was but Bacon. It was like, oh my god, this is so Portland. This is well, so. Pigs like, are incredibly smart. I wonder how. I, I haven't ever heard of that, but I guess it makes sense that they. Oh, there's pet pigs. You can In the book, pig. 1984. No, Animal Farm. <laughs> I'm just imagining walking a pig on a leash like a dog. <laughs> He's just leading the way. <laughs> is there anything like? Is there anything about Nashville? Like, what are you gonna miss about Nashville? All right. Besides. The friendships and me. The, and <laughs> <laughs> the number you. one thing I'm no, going to miss that's like not a living being is Big Shake's hot chicken and fish. <laughs> and barbecue. For, forgot that that was in the rest of the title. What's that? And barbecue? I mean, it's the South. I mean... Oh it's no! Known for its barbecue, right? I mean, I make my own barbecue. <laughs> you can get your sick whip barbecue right here. <laughs> That's right. You make your own barbecue sauce. <laughs> if y'all didn't sick know, <laughs> James makes some amazing barbecue sauce. I really do. <laughs> I wish you had a jar with you. It's just like <laughs> buy it at your local Amazon. Order it right here. <laughs> you get a jar. You get a jar. <laughs> We're handing out jars like crazy today, folks. <laughs> uh, like, I don't know. The music industry is so weird. Like out here, you know, it's like I look forward. Are you, to... are you, are you going to not miss just the kind of? I don't know. The people are too real to themselves here, and not to other people. Like everyone I know is on a like life-altering self-discovery and that's a product of nashville because when you come out to a city as a musician with literally the best musicians in the country who are all coming here Mm -hmm. you then realize that the only way to surpass them is to look inward like some fucking yoga shit you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and find that thumbprint. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like this, the only way you can do better is to just be you and be unique and don't try to copy each other. Yeah. In this homogenous industry. That's what Nashville taught me. I look forward to being around people that I, I can 100% trust that I cannot trust any of these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Damn right. That's that, why, hey, that's why Keith left. That's why, like, because Keith, you know, he's in the film industry, yeah. and he's like, I, I, you know, I mean, I'm sure it wasn't the only reason, but, like, a big part of it was, like, I can't, like, hold a friendship. Like, like I, I can't, or I can't make any, like, I can't tell if, if I'm talking to somebody, if they really want to be my friend, or if they're just looking to get something out of me. Right, yeah. If they want to use, you know, use that connection that I have with somebody else for their own gain. Yeah. I mean, and I have he, a tight he got knit. sick of it. I have a tight knit friend circle anyway. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. Like, my girlfriend, she's got like 50 friends that are all 50 close friends <laughs> and are all still That's friends. a lot of close friends. I, I don't know yeah, if I can handle no that many joke. friends. Yeah, I have like, to drop a couple off and be like, dude, where I'm sorry, man. Hey, this is Shane. Like, they keep coming like from, <laughs> oh, this is my best friend. But I thought you said your best friend was so-and-so. Well, she's also my best friend, but she's my best friend because of this and this. It's like, but then I'm like, yeah, I'm going to miss Shane. <laughs> I miss, like, there's like a handful of people, you know what I mean? Like, literally Four or five people. Um, but that's only because of the type of personality that I have, you know? Like, mm. I don't know, like, K- 
keep a lot of friends. So replacing you guys should be pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. That's the, that's the, that's the gym I know. <laughs> that's a, <laughs> that was a good burn. That was oh, good. That was so good. I'm going to miss that wit. I'm going to miss that wit. Jesus. But man, um, I think, I think that's all the time I got all, all the time. Right. I mean, unless <laughs> you guys want to talk end about on that. Hey guys, yeah. <laughs> let's end on, let's end on, let's end on Jim's quick wit. I mean, like I'm, I really am going to miss you guys. Like you saying? guys have, you've done so much for me and like just as oh, friends. Here's and, what we like, end on. Okay. Google or YouTube search, same company go. Cajun fan. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's totally end on that. That's a great idea. So how I know Jim is that we used to be in a band together called Enjoy the Zoo. And uh, like right when we really started like getting into writing and doing all this other great stuff, I decided to buy a camera. And when I bought that camera, I said one drunken night as we're all just <laughs> drinking and having fun. We're like, guys, let's make a movie. Because I just Let's got dirty. I just got iMovie at that time too. <laughs> iMovie Six, which is oh wow. By the way, still very far superior than whatever <laughs> iMovie is out right now. Um, and so we did a whole movie in one night, and it's called The Cajun Fan, and everyone should YouTube that. <laughs> Enjoy the good. zoo. Cajun uh, fan. Oh we made three movies. It's a trilogy. <laughs> it's a trilogy. There's the Cajun fan, the Cajun fan two. And the Cajun fan 3D in 2D. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I uh, do you was... remember when we, we shot that prequel idea when you first got your cameras? <laughs> oh, yeah. The it's like the same Dude, Aaron, idea. Like... Aaron still talks about that, by the way. Yeah, like, I, I was over just recently. Not recent. Well, I mean, yeah, but the, uh, when did I see them? Uh, about a month ago. And he still talks about it. He's like, we're going to we're gonna do that Cajun fan it. film. <laughs> we're going to do it. I have the script written. Oh, you wrote did you the script, what? did you? I'm going to go ahead and tell you what's going to happen, okay? I'm going to have Aaron get the script ready. I'm going to fly in, and no one knows until we're filming. And the real Cajun fan murderer shows up. And we film the legit me murder you. <laughs> It'll be a snuff film. Oh, yeah. The hottest film on the market, and then they'll make a documentary about us. Occasion and then they'll film. we'll have they'll have That's this. The they'll have Occasion this whole film. a film to die for. <laughs> <laughs> New Orleans. Uh, well, New Orleans. All right. This was a lot of fun. I'm really glad we got I got to do this with you guys before you guys left. And yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was, I hope it you was can a make lot it of fun. Out. And uh, thank you, Jim, for your amazing video camera skills. Um, <laughs> being able to <laughs> to lose an hour's worth of footage. <laughs> We're just practicing. That's all right. It's all good. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, quick plug, real audience. quick. Quick plug. You guys need to check out Sickwit. Sickwit yeah. uh, SoundCloud and on iTunes. And yeah, let's start, title. let's start with Apple Music or Spotify. And then if you must, because you're so poor. Yeah, SoundCloud, of course. I mean, I have on there. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, what? I mean, like, what are they gonna listen to Spotify and you'll get what six cents maybe? Shit, I not on it. If I had a million plays, <laughs> good lord. Oh, we could have got into that. I'm not that rich. Yeah. yeah, if I were getting six cents, you better believe I'd see dead people. Uh, but in all seriousness, check out their music, it's fucking awesome. And uh, yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks guys. for having me. I appreciate it. it. Peace. Bye, everybody. Woo-hoo.